Good evening and thank you for tuning in tonight. My name is Howa and I'm an optometrist. This week is Men's Health Week and Glaucoma Australia have invited me to speak on the importance of caring for your eye health. Although there is a very light underlying theme for Men's Health Week, rest assured the information I will be presenting is hopefully useful for everyone. Most of us can agree that vision and eyesight is probably one of our most important senses that we would have difficulty living without. In fact, in a 2020 survey by Optometry Australia, 74% of Australian men considered vision to be their most important sense. So it would make sense to be proactive about protecting and looking after our eyes. Tonight's talk will go over a few things we can all do for our eye health. One of the most common questions is, are carrots really good for your eyesight? Carrots are high in an antioxidant called beta carotene, which our bodies convert into vitamin A. Vitamin A is important for the receptors in our eyes, especially for seeing in the dark which is where the suggestions for carrots helping with night vision comes from. Vitamin A deficiency can actually cause night blindness and usually associated with poor nutrition or something wrong with how your body processes vitamin A. These cases are sometimes seen in developing countries where malnutrition is an issue. In Australia though, most people with a reasonable diet should get enough vitamin A and fortunately, these cases are not common. So while not having enough vitamin A does affect night vision, eating excessive carrots does not give you any additional night vision benefits. But there are foods that we do want more of, and these contain lutein and zeaxanthin, which are antioxidants in the same family as the beta carotene in carrots, but think of it as like a supercharged version. There are large scale studies showing the benefits of those or well, these antioxidants, particularly for macular degeneration. And these dietary recommendations are often made to people who have or are at risk of macular degeneration. We want lots of green leafy vegetables like kale, spinach, silver beet, and lettuce if you can afford some at the moment, colorful fruits and vegetables um, are also high in antioxidants like uh, berries, sweet potato, pumpkin, and apricots. And the oils that are good for eye health are foods that are high in omega-3 oils like oily fish, such as salmon, mackerel, seeds, in particular flaxseed and linseeds, and nuts such as walnuts and pecans. There are supplements available that, are avail uh, that have been formulated to contain these beneficial antioxidants and vitamins. My preference is to advise healthy eating to obtain these naturally from our foods rather than just taking supplements. But if you are really adverse to healthy eating, have a chat to your healthcare practitioner. Wearing sunglasses is the next top tip. Sorry, I'm not sure if um, we had a technical glitch and just um, broke up for a moment. Um, how are we going there, Sapna? I'll just put the slides back up. Sorry about this, guys. I think technical difficulties just there. Um, I think we're back live now. Um, so, uh, wearing sunglasses is the next top tip. Australia has really harsh UV light. Um, eye-wise, we are worried about melanomas, which can be a problem on the eye surface, on the eyelids, or even inside the eyes. The last one in particular, only an eye test can pick up. Besides melanomas, 
UV damage can cause things like a pterygium, which can be an angry looking growth over your eye with an example pictured um, in the slide. Well, it, it was, but a technical difficulty. <laughs> um, UV light can also cause cataracts and macular degeneration. Um, so protect your eyes and wear your sunglasses when you're outside. What I really wanna cover for Men's Health Week is a special area of interest for me. And that's the prevention of eye injuries. An estimated 125,000 Australians sustain an eye injury every year, with 90% of those preventable with eye protection, such as safety glasses. Men account for 83% of foreign body injuries billed to Medicare by optometrists. Men also account for 84% of emergency eye injury presentations at the Eye and Ear Hospital in Melbourne. My specialty interest is fitting custom contact lenses post-trauma to rehabilitate vision and cosmesis. On the next few slides, I'll show you some eye, eye injuries that I've unfortunately been involved in the care of. This guy was a young tiler and a fragment of tile went through his eye while working. You can see he has a permanent scar and uh, damage to his eye and vision. There is probably some perception that it's not cool or manly to wear eye protection at work, but hopefully by the end of these slides, you will think otherwise. This man was working on his egg farm and pulling something with his pliers, which suddenly gave, and he pulled it straight through his eye. You can see there is some significant scarring and he's also lost the natural lens inside his eye. Here is another eye injury from pliers pulling something right through the eye. In this case here, uh, he is now totally blind in this eye and no surgery or operation can fix this. Here's a traumatic injury from a metal spring hitting the eye at work. And this one is a little bit controversial. Personally, I think that octopus strap should be banned. Um, this man has an obvious injury and has also lost the natural lens inside his eye. You may notice there is actually a contact lens on the eye to help restore vision due to the loss of this lens. It seems when octopus straps accidentally release, they seem to always go straight for the eyeball. Uh, here's another octopus strap injury. You might see a little sparkle at the one o'clock position there um, at the top of the black area. This is a drainage shunt a glaucoma specialist had to put into this eye because the damage to the eye caused a traumatic glaucoma. I'll show you just one more slide here. Um, this guy hit a golf ball into a tree, uh, not on purpose, and it ricocheted back into his eye, rupturing the eyeball. You can see the sutures holding the eyeball back together. Uh, this golf injury is far less common than squash ball injuries, of which um, we see many happen every year. Um, you may have seen in the news, celebrity chef George Calambaras needed six eye surgeries after sustaining a squash ball injury to his eye a few years ago. Um, you can see from these examples, eye injuries can change your life faster than the blink of an eye from quite ordinary activities. Eye protection is a clear example of prevention being better than a cure because unfortunately with these serious eye injuries, there is no cure for permanent vision loss. And there's George there after six injuries, um, still smiling, but definitely we, something that we want to avoid. If you are a smoker, I know you've heard it before. I'm not gonna tell you to stop smoking, but if you can smoke less, just reduce your smoking a little bit your eyes will thank you for it. Smoking damages small blood vessels, of which your eyes have many, 
And smoking increases your risk of macular degeneration, cataract, glaucoma, and diabetic damage to the eye. And yeah, with an increase in working from home, and ironically, you tuning into this talk via computer, there's been an increase in screen time and consequently the sore eyes, headaches and dry eyes that come along with this. Taking regular breaks from screen usage is useful. Some people like to teach the 20-20-20 rule, which is to take a 20 second break every 20 minutes, looking 20 feet away. Fortunately tonight, we've scheduled this talk to go for 15 minutes so you can pay attention without having to look away. The best thing you can do is have regular eye tests because the early stages of some of the devastating eye diseases are not noticeable. In early stages of diabetes and high blood pressure, early bleeding and fluid leakage inside the eyes doesn't cause pain or vision changes. By the time someone does notice vision loss, there is often significant damage inside the eyes already. But even if you don't have diabetes or high blood pressure, glaucoma is a great example. Glaucoma being the leading cause of asymptomatic vision loss, it requires regular eye testing to detect and monitor. So make your eye health a priority. Book in for an eye test with your local optometrist, even if you feel you have no problems. Now is the time to develop a relationship with an optometrist and get your optometrist or healthcare practitioner to know you so that when something changes with your eyes, they will notice it. I know with my patients, sometimes I wish I knew what their eyes were like a month ago, a year ago, or even five years ago, particularly for things inside the eyes that can only be observed with an eye test. If you feel you need support with your diagnosis, groups like Glaucoma Australia and Macular Disease Foundation are some of the fantastic support groups around. And once more, because it's Men's Health Week, Let's finish with some stats that we can hopefully all change together. The 2016 Medicare statistics showed that women accessed over 35% more eye care services than men. And early analysis of some unreleased 2021 data, courtesy of Optometry Australia, showed men aged between 15 to 75 access significantly less eye care services than women. In the working age group ranges, uh, in those darker blue slides, females accessed over 50% more eye care services than men. Certainly, there isn't that much of a difference in Australia's population of males versus females. So let's make our eye health a priority. Um, thank you for tuning in tonight. I think we have time for a few questions. Thank you. Um, so looking at our questions, um, the first one we have is I have perfect vision and don't wear glasses. How can I have glaucoma? Um, while there are eye problems caused by us doing something wrong, for example, um, from the talk, eye injuries due to not wearing eye protection or UV damage from not wearing sunglasses, um, diabetic eye damage from poor diet or sugar control, um, there are many eye conditions that just happen without us doing anything wrong at all. Um, so things like the need for reading glasses or multifocals happening naturally with age, uh, certain inflammatory problems with the eyes um, and an annoying eye condition called glaucoma. 
glaucoma from a patient's point of view isn't noticeable in its early stages of vision loss because it affects the peripheral vision first. And while certain health factors can increase the risk of glaucoma, um, it isn't considered a disease you get from poor lifestyle choices and can definitely affect healthy people. Um, so it is something that having regular eye tests, getting checked out is going to make a, a big difference for, um, even if you have perfect vision um, or don't wear glasses. And let's see. So um, another question that has just popped up is, um, oh, this one's a common one. Is weightlifting bad for the health of my eyes? I heard it affects eye pressure. Um, okay. Um, weightlifting... Um, and weightlifting of heavy weights um, can increase eye pressure. And it is something you should discuss with your specialist if you have glaucoma. It will depend on your type of glaucoma and how well your glaucoma is controlled, what they will recommend. Um, I mean, it could be something like reducing the, the, the weights um, and just increasing the reps you do. So you're not causing as many spikes in your eye pressure. Um, weightlifting is not the only fitness activity that may increase eye pressure. Um, things like being upside down, um, doing things like handstands and, and yoga can cause increases in eye pressure. Um, more specifically with the yoga, um, it's the downward facing positions in yoga not an expert, but I know that they are called, um, one's called Downward Dog, um, but there are a few other um, fancy names for positions where, where the um, head's pointing down. Um, and sometimes the discussion with your specialist might be just to avoid those positions. Um, so um, it, it's not as high risk, but it really depends on what stage of glaucoma you have, what type of glaucoma you have. Um, so speak to your professional about that. Um, tight swimming goggles uh, are also known to increase eye pressure. So there are some racing types which fit really streamlined into your, your eye socket. Um, you can get some wider fitting goggles that don't press so deep into the eyes. Um, so unless you're an aspiring Olympic swimmer or something like that, it's something you can do to avoid. Um, but really the benefits of being active and leading a healthy lifestyle are important to overall health and eye health. Um, so don't cut out all of these fitness activities because you're concerned that um, it can make your glaucoma worse, but really uh, have a chat with your glaucoma specialist and and just make them aware of the kind of special things that you are doing. Um, also, um, I think this one leads on to a similar question. Um, what types of exercises and sport should I be careful of when considering my eyes? Um, very similar to the last question. Um, as discussed, there are certain exercises and sports that can cause a temporary spike in eye pressure, such as heavy weights, um, certain downward yoga positions, headstands and tight fitting goggles. Um, but also covered in the, in the talk, uh, uh, sports like squash um, is a high risk activity without eye protection. So wear your goggles or um, protective um, eyewear when you're, when you're playing squash um, and any sports that might cause um, trauma, uh, traumatic eye or head injuries or trauma to the eye or head uh, like boxing or bungee jumping. Um, 
Another question here, would you recommend tea instead of coffee? Tea has antioxidants and coffee is linked to high eye pressure. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely there are, um, uh, there are benefits in consuming antioxidants in your foods. Um, I think with all of those things like tea and coffee, the consumption should be um, a sensible amount. Um, I think... Yeah, a sensible amount is is really good, and and I'm just watching the um, the questions pop up. I had a patient that was a, a professional bodybuilder, and and they were consuming like about twenty or thirty cups of tea a day um, because apparently there's some benefits in 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 weight loss through that. But I wasn't sure about that. But I think um, a, a sensible amount is. Um, quite useful um can steroids used for bodybuilding increase eye pressure that's a that's a good question um yes um i think um steroids is something that is quite um quite a big one in terms of affecting your eye pressure um there, uh, in some people, it's like 30% of the population, they are called what we call steroid responders. And there's some remodeling that happens within the eyes that just affects the drainage pathway of the fluid inside our eyes and causes the, the eye pressure to skyrocket. Um, but in terms of that, um, just as a general eye care topic, um, steroids can cause other issues um, apart from just increasing the eye pressure. Um, cataract is one of the big ones. Uh, we, we often see uh, patients that have um, skin conditions that apply a lot of um, steroid creams around the eyes that can develop cataracts when they're, when they're very young. Um, and there are other eye conditions like that I can think of um, one's called central serous uh, chorioretinopathy, that steroid has been linked to causing fluid leakage inside the eye that causes a, a quite a, a pronounced central vision loss. Um, so not just in terms of eye pressure, steroid can cause a lot of different things that can affect the eyes. Um, there's a question in regards to supplements. Um, so, okay, so are there any supplements I can take to improve my eye health? And I'll tackle that one um, with another question that just popped up about vitamin B3 as well. Um, from my talk, you can hear that my preference is to advise a healthy diet and to obtain all your antioxidants and vitamins we need from our foods naturally. However, if your diet is really lacking in certain things like vegetables or omega-3 oils, it could be worth chatting to your optometrist or eye specialist in regards to um, supplements. Specific to glaucoma, there are many supplements that might be promoted with varying levels of scientific basis of whether they're beneficial or not. Um, the leading contender is vitamin B3, nicotinamide, and it is still being investigated with some promising results. So probably one of the largest studies I believe in the world is, is being done in Melbourne. Um, uh, one of my colleagues of mine um, that I studied with is actually the leading researcher on that one. Thank you, Flora. Um, but look, the main thing is to be upfront with your glaucoma specialist and discuss any supplements you may be considering or taking. Um, it's important that these sup that you know if you are taking supplements, they are to supplement your current treatment and not to replace any eye drops your specialist may have prescribed. Um, let's see. Um, what about meditating and breathing exercises? I heard the blood flow is beneficial to the optic nerve. Um, 
that's a fantastic, um, I guess that's a fantastic piece of advice in thinking about glaucoma as not just an eye pressure problem, but also uh, in regards to blood flow to the optic nerve. Um, so we often talk about things like blood um, perfusion pressure or really in lay terms, just how well the optic nerve in the eye is getting blood flow. Um, and some people with uh, low tension or normal tension glaucoma where the eye pressure is, is normal, um, what we do think is implicated is, is what the blood flow is like to the optic nerve. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly um, uh, in terms of how meditating or breathing exercises increase the blood flow to the optic nerve. Um, but, yeah, it sounds like a fantastic idea um, with that. Um, does extreme stress or stressful lifestyle affect eye health? Um, definitely, yes. Um, I did mention a condition before called uh, central serous retinopathy, which um, steroid is one of the main causes of it. Um, thank you for leading this question as well, because um, the highest group of people who get this eye condition are males. Um, in the last month, we've had three or four males come through my clinic um, in their mid thirties or so with this, with this eye problem. And they came in just noticing that their central vision was just gone. Um, they just couldn't see. Um, and in terms of the patients that I do um, look after, they're all male that have this eye condition and it's linked to a high stress lifestyle. Um, and with that high stress, your body naturally releases cortisol, which is a type of steroid. And that is thought to cause this kind of uh, fluid leakage in the eye um, and, and affect it. Um, so a lot of the times is having that conversation about what are the stresses in um, normally in, in, in this man's life um, and what we can do to try and reduce them. Um, and finally, I think we've got time for one more question and it is, does high blood pressure affect eye health? And um, yes, yes, it does. Um, high, high blood pressure causes um, uh, stress to the blood vessels. Um, so our eyeballs have one of the largest networks of really, really fine blood vessels in our body, um, much like the kidneys. And when, when you have high blood pressure, um, it damages those very small blood vessels first. We always say that um, eye testing is really good in those cases of people with diabetes or high blood pressure um, because it's the only part of the body where we can look directly at the small blood vessels. Um, nowhere else in the body can we look directly at those small blood vessels without having to inject something into your bloodstream um, and, and using quite expensive, um, time-consuming um, equipment um, to look at it, like in terms of modeling your kidneys and things like that. So getting the eye test is, is, is great because we can look directly um, at those blood vessels. Um, and as I said before, even if you don't have high blood pressure, even if you don't have diabetes. Um, and I'm getting the wrap up notice. So thanks for all those great questions. I think, um, yeah, um, great to cover. Um, thank you for tuning in tonight and yeah, stay warm on this cold winter's night in Melbourne, um, or wherever you are in Australia. Sorry. Thank you.